Hey everybody, it's Jason here from AV Pro Global. I am in my dark room here in St. Petersburg, Florida doing some testing. And with me is our training director, Jim Burns. How's it going, Jim? Everything's great. I am in Western New York today. Good, good to hear from you. Uh, today's webinar is gonna be on a really cool USB product that has been desperately needed in our industry. And I'm really excited to hear about it and, and see it and, and kind of see some of the great use cases for it. So. Uh, before we get started into the presentation, we've got a whole bunch of people here on the attendee list. Thank you guys so much for coming to hang out with us for a little while. Lots of familiar names, good to see. Um, there is a chat box on your uh, control panel. Feel free to use the chat box, uh, ask questions if you have any comments. I'll be sort of monitoring that throughout the presentation. And if there are any questions that we don't get to during the presentation, we'll leave some time at the end. So with that being said, uh, we're about 301, so let's get started. And Jim, that's all you. All right. Okay, so at AV Pro Edge, we like to provide solutions. And um, we like talking about our products in that way. How are you gonna use it? What's it gonna be useful for in the field? Well, right here up on the screen, we have a couple of questions, right? What if you need a USB 3.0? Uh, connectivity for longer than nine feet. The USB 3 spec says that the cables cannot be longer than nine feet. That's great for connectivity on your desk, but if you're doing conference rooms, huddle rooms, uh, large meeting rooms, corporate boardrooms, that's not going to cut it whatsoever. Uh, what if you need to extend three or four USB 3.2 signals? Well, pretty much in every job that I just mentioned, you're going to need to do that. Um, or, you know, you're putting upgrades in, right? Uh, client of yours has just upgraded all the computers in the building now everyone has usb 3.2 uh, ports on it and you need to be able to integrate those into the existing huddle rooms and conference rooms well you also have some legacy usb 2 equipment there so you might have lag and timing issues if you try running those two formats together the product that we're talking about today will make sure none of the it will solve all of your problems and not create any other issues like lag and timing errors and that product is the AC US EX USB 3 kit. This is a 100 meter USB 3.2 Gen 1 extender kit. It extends the USB signal up to 100 meters on category cable. So it'll transport 3.2 Gen 1 signals up to 100 meters. It'll support 4K cameras, microphones, uh, legacy USB 2.0 and 1.0 devices. You have a total bandwidth of five gigabits per second between our host end and our device end. Uh, you're able to send USB 3.2, 2.0 and 1.0 signals simultaneously. Let's take a close look at these products. We have a device end and a host end. And a lot of times we talk about things as transmitter and receiver, but it's a full duplex communication between these units. So we can have full communication data going back and forth between them. So there's an end that plugs into your computer, which is the host. And then the other end is the devices. The devices are gonna be mouse, keyboard, uh, conference bar, cameras, speaker phones, uh, all those types of things are gonna be, be very common. We take a close look at the front. On our device end, we have four USB 3.2 type A connectors. On the back of that unit is our connection for uh, our link for our data line between the host and the device. We take a look at the host. We have our USB 3.2 input, and then we have our link. Uh, one thing to point out right here is this USB 3.2 host. We do have a small screw hole up there, so it can use a locking USB-C cable. And that is gonna be important for a lot of rooms that are bring your own device. Um, people, of course, love to use USB-C to charge their phones. And if there's an extra cable laying around, it's very likely to disappear. So this will be able to lock in to your host end so that cable will actually be there when someone needs to present. This, these units are power over cable. So the power will go between the two units over the category cable that you're using. Both the host and the device have 48 volt power plugs on them. We supply the power supply with the kit. Uh, you can 
power either end of the system. So you can power the host or you can power the device end, whichever is more convenient for you. Um, that's actually fairly unusual in the industry. Most other products like this on the market, they're not as full featured. And one of the ways they're not as full featured is the host end tends to be powered by the device it's plugged into the computer itself. So that means you have to power the device end. And that is not always the easiest thing or the best way to do it because sometimes that device end is you know, behind a display uh, in that conference room. So you have a choice, whichever is easier for you to power, you can power that other side. Uh, I mentioned we connect with category cable. We recommend CAT 6A. CAT 6A will go 100 meters. CAT 5E will work up to 70 meters. It will work just fine. We do have a five megabit, I'm sorry, five gigabit bandwidth in between. So 5E is a decent cable for that. It just won't go as far. On the front of the host unit, you may have noticed, and I didn't talk about a couple slides ago, we have this switch for it's the USB five volt. It's either for host, it says host, or it says on. We have two choices to power here. Um, the way the USB spec is written, your host always has five volts on the bus. That is so when you plug in, plug a device in, it knows it's been plugged in and it'll turn on and it'll start talking with the computer to say, you know, here's the power I need, here's what I need to do. When you're in a bring your own device situation, we recommend that you flip this USB five volt switch over to host. The reason being when a computer shows up in the room, they'll plug in, the host will turn on. It will sense the computer and it'll turn on and it'll power up whatever's connected to it at the device end. When the computer is removed in the bring your own device situation, those devices will know that the host has disappeared and they'll go into sleep mode and they'll wait to be told to wake up again. That is important because some of those devices, uh, especially all in one, conference bars where your camera is there, your microphone array and your speakers. Um, they're really three devices in one box with a hub in there themselves. If they don't know the host disappeared, they're gonna wait for a command from the last computer that was there. So that means when you plug a new computer in, it's possible that those devices aren't gonna know a new computer was plugged in and they're not gonna communicate and they're not gonna work. So having this voltage on host is very helpful. Like I say, when you disconnect your computer, because this is an extension, it will tell the devices on the other side that the host is gone. Uh, if you have a computer that's always there in the room and you wanna keep everything up hot, you can switch the USB five volt uh, to always on, which is hot. So it'll always think that there's a host there. But in most cases with the bring your own device, you're far better off to have it in the host position. On our device end, we have four USB 3.2 Gen 1 Type A inputs. They also accept USB 2.0 and 1.0. Uh, this is a four port hub. It is USB 3.0 super speed. Uh, we have like I mentioned five gigabit bandwidth between and it's full duplex. Um, we do have these four inputs on here, but we can actually handle up to 17 inputs. So you can plug a, another hub into this end and you can expand how many devices that you have hooked up to your host. We'll talk a little bit more about that uh, when we talk about applications. So we support DisplayLink. Uh, so this is easy connection between computers and displays. So you, what's so awesome about this is your audio and your video and your keyboard and mouse are all gonna go through one cable, which is a USB-C. Uh, you may not have heard of FrameSync before. FrameSync matches the USB 2.0 and the USB 3 data transfers. Obviously, USB 3 data is much faster than USB 2. What happens in a lot of cases is the camera in the room, if you have a camera hooked up, that is probably USB 3. But your audio devices are most likely USB 2. Plenty of bandwidth and plenty of speed uh, for audio in USB 2. What can happen in that room is your camera can be a little bit ahead of the audio and it can have a little bit of a lip, lip sync issue. Uh, what FrameSync does, it'll match the speed of the USB 2.0 and 3.0 data, so you're not gonna see a lip sync issue up on the screen. It maintains uh, even speed among those formats 
as they come in. So just a quick look at a bunch of the different devices that we can have hooked up here. You know, conference all-in-one bars, which I mentioned, 4K PTZ cameras, 4K EPTZ cameras, conference microphones, speakerphones, mice, keyboards, dongles for Bluetooth devices, printers, memory sticks, storage units, game controllers, and I mean, the list can go on. Anything that's USB will work with this system. Let's take a look at our first application. This is gonna be a good example of most installs, how they're gonna work. You're gonna have your computer set up, that's you're gonna be your host. And then we're gonna have a few devices. Uh, in this particular case, they're gonna be at the front of the room or behind the screen, our camera, a keyboard, our mouse, and a microphone. All of that can be extended up to 100 meters with CAT 6A, off to our host, wherever the computer's sitting. And as I mentioned, we can expand that system and ha have more inputs. And here we're gonna use more microphones. Very common again, sometimes a couple speaker phones on the table, a couple microphones in front of the speakers. We still have our camera for this conference system, uh, keyboard and mouse, and we can add another device too. So we added a general hub there. And like I said, we can go up to 17 devices. You do need to be careful, right? We have five gigabits moving between our host and our device. You're not gonna be able to get 10 4K cameras there. There's just not enough bandwidth. But microphones, bunch of microphones, uh, keyboard, mouse, camera, some ancillary devices, they shouldn't be an issue at all. So creating extenders is what AV Pro does. This is one of the first in a uh, new line of USB 3 extenders. We know how to do this, and we know what you guys need in the field. This has a very small form factor. It's a lot smaller than pretty much everything else out in the market. Uh, just roughly speaking, if I remember the specs off the top of my head, the device unit is 4.3 inches by 3.1 inches by 3 quarters of an inch tall, and the host unit is 3.1 inches by 3.1 inches by 3 quarters of an inch tall. So they're very small. So you can easily hide it. Uh, behind a display, under a desk, in a podium, recessed in a wall box. A lot of options here. We do include a mounting kit and the power supply with these units, so these can be mounted underneath something or behind or to a wall. Do I have any questions at this point in time? Nothing has popped up. The, uh, the only question that came up, you actually just answered it sort of in conversation, and that was uh, what transmission length might we expect on a certified CAT6, and that is gonna be 100 meters. That's 100 meters, yes. Should be- Only questions, only questions so far though, guys. If you have more, just keep- No problem coming. at all. Yep. All right, well, because this is an AV Pro product, we of course have our 10 year no BS warranty. So this unit will be out in the field for up to 10 years, not an issue whatsoever. If you ever have a problem with it, give us a call, we'd be happy to, let you know how to fix it or replace it for you if needed. All right, just to surmise what we have, this is our AC EX USB 3 kit, 100 meter USB 3.0 extension kit. Any questions from anyone? Anything else? So yeah, there's a, a another question from Girardi says, can it handle three 4K cameras, and that would just depend on the bandwidth. Um, well, yes. So if they're EPTZs, probably it shouldn't be an issue at all because for the EPTZs, they actually zoom uh, for their pans. So they're not using that whole portion of the camera. Um, if it's a regular 4K camera, the answer is also probably. The reason being is uh, in the negotiation, they might drop down to USB 2.0. If it was designed properly, it should drop down and those still should work. But it, you know, it, like we learned with HDMI and we talked about with HDMI, same thing with USB. If people don't follow the standards and don't follow the rules, other companies and these other devices, then we have issues. Uh, as long as everyone's following the rules and it's made properly, it will work. Uh, next question. Uh from Damien, you mentioned it's suitable for game controllers. 
have you tested the lag? That's usually the question we get when people want to discuss controller extensions. So what about the lag if extending a video game controller? Well, as it turns out at AV Pro, we have quite a few gamers in our uh, engineering and development group. Uh, so, so, so they have used it. Um, I, I, Damien, I don't have the spec off the top of my head, but it is very quick. There is no noticeable lag and it works great for gaming. I know we uh, we have a couple of Xbox, I think X's around here somewhere, and they've been really testing the yeah. heck out of it. Yeah, and that's, that's one of the first things that gets tested. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And uh, Damien's question looks like it was the last one. Oop, Michael just popped in another question. Uh, are you able to use multiple extenders on one codec? Not with this kit, but soon. All right, cool. Um, Michael says, thank you. That was his question. And we'll give it another couple of minutes in case you guys uh, do have any last minute questions. But um, while we're wrapping up here, thank you guys for uh, for hanging out with us during the webinar. As you can see on the screen right there, um, uh, our website, avproedge.com, uh, the USB extender is up there right now if you want to dig into the specs a little bit more. Um, info at avproedge.com. If you have any questions, feel free to send those and we will get to you right away. And don't forget the AV Pro Edge and Meridio YouTube channels. Lots of great stuff on those YouTube channels. And oh, two more questions just came in. Thank you guys so much. Will a switchable model be coming? At AV Pro, we provide solutions. We will we will have uh, we'll have a lot of announcements. Um, at Infocom, we'll have some more announcements yeah. about some product coming out, and uh, expect a lot from us with USB 3X. Yeah, it's, we'll uh, have it's a lot of different solutions over a lot of different platforms. Um, as I look at it, if you think of everything we've done with HDMI. Uh, expect those same type of products for USB 3.3x. Cool, good. And shipping date on this guy? Uh, whenever we do these seminars, we are shipping 30 days after the introduction. We do that so uh, we can fill up the pipeline with our partners and our distributors. So these are in the warehouse in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. These are ready to go, and they may have already gone to some of our distributors, so it will ship in 30 days. And that looks like the last question. So yeah, guys, keep the questions coming in if, if you have them. Uh, but as Jim said, uh, Infocom is gonna be huge. You got a really nice booth planned out. So if you're gonna be in the Las Vegas area, please visit us at Infocom, get some hands-on demos and see a lot of this great stuff uh, in action right there um, on the fly in a real live environment. Um, Jim, I think that's it, bud. There's no more questions here and uh, we're right on time. So. Thanks for the education and showing us this new product. It looks really promising and looks like it's going to solve a lot of problems. Uh, very affordable and, you know, like you mentioned, the little boxes themselves are, are nice and small. You only have to power one side. It sounds like it's going to be a very cool, convenient uh, problem-solving product here. So thank it you, is. Jim. Thank uh, you thanks, everyone, everybone, for attending. And we will have another product launch in a couple of weeks. Yeah, cool. And if any of your coworkers couldn't make the, uh, the live uh, session today. Uh, it has been recorded. It'll be up on YouTube uh, tonight or tomorrow. Uh, a question just snuck in. Oh, is there mounting Michael, hardware? Yeah. Yes, there is mounting yes. hardware with the power supply in the box. Okay, awesome. All right, guys. Well, thanks again, and we'll see you on the next one and hopefully at Infocom.